In this video, we'll be primarily focusing on the settings for the new iOS 14 firmware update. There's a lot of new stuff that Apple added, so let's go ahead and begin. So some of these new privacy controls is Wi-Fi. If you actually go into your settings and quickly tap into your Wi-Fi tab right here, click on the Wi-Fi that you're currently connected to by tapping the little eye icon. And down here, there's a new tab right here where you could actually enable a private address. And there's a nice description here on what exactly it does. It uses a private address, which helps reduce tracking of your iPhone across different Wi-Fi networks. So since it's there and it's free to use, I will highly recommend enabling it. Now, if we exit off of that, another cool privacy change is if you actually scroll down, let's say you don't like that Facebook is tracking your exact location whenever you use the app. It doesn't have to be Facebook, could be another one that uses tracking, but whatever application you pick, if you click on it and you click on location and down here, there is now this new precise location. With this enabled, this allows the app to use your specific location when the setting is off. Apps can now determine your approximate location. So in other words, by turning this off, that little circle dot icon, that ratio is going to be much bigger, so it's a little bit more challenging for apps to actually track your exact location. Now in the photo album, I'm sure we should already be aware, we always had this like hidden album, but it's not so hidden because anybody who knows how to locate it can easily tap on it and access your hidden photos. Well now there's actually a new way you could actually hide even this hidden album. So now it requires a little bit more steps if somebody has access to your phone and wants to check out that hidden folder. If you go into your settings real quick and go down to photos and right here there's now a new hide album if we quickly just go in and turn that off and go back to our photos now it's gone so if you want to re-enable this you have to go back in your settings and all the photos that you were previously already had in there are still going to stay in there now going back in the menu another new privacy changes now you can actually hide certain applications or you can use this to clean up your iphone's homes page as well so by simply enabling wiggle mode and if you tap on these little dots right here you could check mark the apps and if you tap done that page is now gone and it's not deleted if you want to re-enable it just do the same process and just check mark it and now it's back great way to not just clean up your iPhone's homepage, but also hide some applications you don't want others to see. Moving along, Siri itself got a couple new settings in the setting software side of things. If you actually go back in your, this application, your settings app, if you go into accessibilities, if you scroll down and look for Siri, in this tab, there's now is a couple additional, somewhat very useful option, one of which is the type Siri. Now, whenever you enable Siri, you can literally type up something without verbally having to say something. So if you're in a public environment and you don't want to like verbally ask Siri to do certain things, you can just type it in. Now the only con about this is that it does take up your whole screen space. It doesn't allow you to see the application that was open in the background. That's the only con about this, but it actually works really well. And it also keeps a history of some of your past requests as well. So you can go back and view that. I thought that was really interesting. But let's quickly disable that. Another one I want to show you is the only hey that name option if you read the description siri will only speak when you use the hey blank or when you connect to a bluetooth device or carplay this is new and then also always speak response siri will always speak even when silent mode is on so if you have your phone on mute you always hear siri respond but that's not the one I want to really talk about, about the voice feedback tab right here. That I thought that was really interesting. The really interesting one to me is the always listen to the hey, you know, the name. Was this enabled? Even if you have your phone facing flat down on a flat surface and you say the name, hey, you know, I don't want to set off your device. But Siri will actually go on and start listening to take whatever request or command you want to give it. So that's what that does. And then down here, there's also is the show app behind Siri. Remember how the keyboard was taking up the space? Well, when you disable this and you launch Siri, the app that's in the background is non-visible now. So if you want to reverse back to iOS 13 for some reason, if you feel like it, you can. I personally prefer leaving this on. Now you may be wondering how I'm able to have the I and O icon. 
I just enabled this just to make my device look different than anybody else's. If you also want to do the same thing, it's really easy. Since we're still in the accessibility tab, just go back and tap on display and text size. And right here you'll see the on and off labels. Enable that if you'll want to also have the I and O icons for on and off. And then if we go back and go into the face ID and attention, I might as well also cover this. Here you get three additional settings. The most interesting one that I think everybody will find useful is the haptic on successful authorization. When you enable this and we lock our device and face ID scans you, you actually get like a haptic feedback. So you can actually feel that your phone unlocks. So instead of you have to actually have to visualize the little lock icon right there. I like it. It's a cool sensation. And then above here is the attention aware feature. What basically this will do is allow your iPhone to check and see if you're paying attention before the, your screen display dims down. So if you look away, your screen will dim down. But if you notice that you're keeping an eye on it, it'll maintain the brightness as well as it will show or not show your, lo your notification. So when this is enabled and you get a notification, it's just going to show you the icon of the app. But when you look at it, it'll actually give you the brief summary of that notification. And then require attention for face ID. Basically, if you disable this, your face ID won't require you to actually make eye contact to the phone for it to unlock. So you're eliminating one layer of security. I recommend just leaving it on. Another setting to also be aware of is if you actually go back, if we go right here in the main set, uh, setting menu, if you go down to your phone, the phone tab right here, if you click on the incoming calls, we have two banner options display options if you don't like the new smaller card for the incoming call you could reverse back to the full screen like how it used to look on the previous ios and now whenever you receive an incoming call you get the old classic look i guess but you can still swipe up and tap on the little call icon if you decide to answer or leave them and let them go to voicemail but this is how you could reverse back to that if you want to then the next setting can be found inside the wallet app believe it or not this is a new feature that allows your family members to have access to the Apple Cash that's available on your balance. This will allow you to send currency to your child if they finish chores, their daily allowance, or you want to give them like a gift for them to buy something online or something. I guess this is a quicker method to like do that. I think it's cool. It's not for me, but I know somebody will get a lot of good use for this. And this is a new feature that I saw nobody else has covered yet. Now going back into settings, I want to show you a couple of new settings inside the message app. So if we scroll down to messages, and if we scroll down to character count, I recommend enabling this. This is perfect if you have those friends are in the green. You know how they have like a limit whenever you're messaging somebody. Now whenever you're actually typing up something, it gives you a little counter right there. This way you know when to split your message into two or three in case you have to say like a long paragraph or something. But back here, there's now is this new notify me feature. Now by default, this is going to be enabled. But whenever you're in those annoying group chats, well, I wouldn't really say annoying, depending on the group chat you're in. But sometimes there's times where you really don't want to hear what's going on because somebody else is having like their own separate conversations. You may have just turned off the notification to that group. But in case there's something's going, something's going on and they actually at you, like with an at or mention your name, you'll actually be notified about that group message. So you can actually go in and see what's going on and see if it's important. So by default, again, this is enabled, but if you don't like this, you can also come in here and disable that. That was new that Apple added for iOS 14. And below that, you also see the filter unknown sender. Again, this is also enabled by default. What basically this does is if it's a contact number, that's a part of your contact list, you're gonna get a push notifications. If it's not a number that's in your contact list, it's gonna be filtered out in the unknown. That's basically what those do. Now, on my previous video, I show you how to change the default web browser to a third party one, like Google Chrome or something. Well, you could do the exact same thing with certain mail applications as well. I'm gonna use Spark as a fine example. With Spark, if you actually go back into the home menu of your settings, if you scroll down and look for that app, if you tap on it, now there is this new cool option where you can actually change the default mail app. So you could enable Spark if you want to. So now whenever you receive a, a email or you click on an email link, it will automatically switch and take you to that dedicated new default 
third party mail app. Now I'd like to give a big special shout out to Corey Hayes from our previous video. He gave us a list of features that we didn't cover on the other video. One of which that was new to me was the series face down. I didn't know this was newly added. So thankfully I was able to include it in this video. If you'd like a quick shout out for the next iOS 14 video for the part three, feel free to comment down below. Suggest a feature that we haven't yet covered for your chance to get a shout out. So make sure you are subscribed for the part three video that's coming out soon. Besides that, thanks so much for watching. You can watch the previous video in case you missed it right here. And then that other video is just a video that YouTube is suggesting specifically for you. Anyways, stay safe, stay healthy, and I'll catch you all in the next one. See ya.